I felt convicted in my spirit to make a second video, because I am really concerned about all the deceiving and misleading teachings on YouTube and elsewhere. So I will provide multiple scriptures which speak the Lord's truth and hopefully open the eyes, of those who are being deceived and misled. Time is so short, and it's imperative you learn the truth. The Bible says. James 5, 19-20, quote, My brothers and sisters, if any among you strays from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that the one who turns a sinner from the error of his way, shall save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins, end quote. So I'm making this video, to tell fellow Christian brethren of the error you are deceived by. A doctrine that makes many believe it's okay to still be of the world, and sinning, because they wrongly believe you can't lose salvation. We are warned. 2 Timothy 4 3, quote, For the time will come when they will not put up with sound instruction, but they will pile up for themselves teachers in keeping with their own desires, to have their ears tickled, end quote. People still living unrepentantly in the world after having said their prayer of salvation, are of course going to be very happy to believe they don't need to change their lives much as a believer, which is why their ears are itching for false doctrines that teach such an easy way. It clearly doesn't tickle Christians' ears to be told they must be obedient and repentant, so 2 Timothy 4.3 is not aimed at those who are. The Bible also tells us at 2 Peter 1.20, that scripture is not for any person's own interpretation. 2 John 9-10, quote, Anyone who goes too far and does not remain in Messiah's teaching does not have God. Anyone who remains in this teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not welcome him into your home or even give him a greeting, end quote. Do not listen to false preachers. Your eternal soul is at stake. Do you know where false doctrine originated? From the seed of the serpent. Some false teachers may be genuinely deceived themselves, but don't believe any of them, instead pray for them. They will have the blood of those they send to hell with their false doctrine, on their hands, as the Bible teaches at Ezekiel 3.18, that their blood will be required at the hands of the one who didn't warn them, and also Revelation 22.19, that if anyone takes away anything from the Bible, they will not eat of the tree of life. Jude 1.4, quote, For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago, have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people, who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only Sovereign and Lord, end quote. Those are the seed of the serpent, and false doctrines have their origins from these evildoers. Once saved always saved, often abbreviated to Ozas and alternatively called Calvinism, is being widely taught, whereby people are told they just need to repent once with a sinner's prayer, and that's it, they're always secure in their salvation, and that if they continue sinning, no further repentance is needed. It is true that it's grace that saves us and we can do no works to earn salvation, because it's the free gift of Jesus' sacrifice that pays for our sins. But it doesn't end there, and this is where people are being misled and confused. We must become a new man, die to ourselves, be obedient to God, and if we stumble in sin along the way, we must repent when it happens and ask the Holy Spirit to help us not commit the sin again. We are warned to be ready for Jesus' coming, that means not having unrepentant willful sin in our lives. Luke 17 4, models truth for us, with Jesus' words for when a brother sins against us. Quote, Even if he sins against you seven times a day, and seven times returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him, end quote. Do you know why? Because that's what Jesus does. If you refuse to turn from sin and fail to repent for sins undertaken once you have accepted Jesus, your new sins after that point are unforgiven. That doesn't mean we are perfect, we can never be perfect and that's why we need Jesus, but the Bible, KJV, says at 1 Peter 1.16, quote, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy, end quote. We wouldn't need to be told to be holy if we were automatically holy once we were saved, would we? Ozas in the context of continuing sinning unrepentantly, is not scriptural and is not truth. The truth is, that when you repent and are saved, 
the Holy Spirit enters you and changes you, you turn from sin and as the Bible teaches, you strive to stop sinning thereafter and if you slip up, you repent. You don't continue in unrepentant, willful sin, thinking you can't lose salvation, this is against scripture. Repentance is constantly taught in the Bible, you can't repent of future sin. Our future sin from the point of salvation, is forgiven, when we repent afterwards, but the Lord expects obedience from us from when we are saved, not that we are carnal Christians. This is not legalism, as some Ozas preachers claim, the law, refers to the Torah, Old Testament, Mosaic laws. It's also not adding to, or taking anything away from the sacrifice of Jesus either, because we know the thing that enables us to be saved in the first place is God's grace. But if we don't become a new person in Christ, then we are using our free will to reject the Holy Spirit guiding us in obedience. Jesus says in the Bible that no man can take a believer from his hand, John 10:28, but believers can walk away using free will, by continuing in unrepentant sin. The Bible tells us repeatedly that the wages of sin are death. These false teachers will contort in all sorts of ways, to deny scripture that shows Ozas to be false, such as claiming quoted verses are taken out of context, or that it's for the Jews only, a form of dispensationalism, and false, because all believers constitute one church, one bride of Christ. Satan himself appears as an angel of light, and has infiltrated the church, he mixes truth with lies to sound convincing, and that's how he deceives people. I have found most Ozas preachers and believers turn nasty and name call, when scripture shows Ozas to be false doctrine is politely pointed out to them, so much do they want to defend their easy life. That's not Christian behavior and it's actually been really upsetting to me, to see the cliques in the community, the arguments, and the unchristian attitudes. The Bible says we know a man's heart by his words, Matthew 15:18. If people are told that no matter what, they can't lose their salvation, of course many will remain carnal, they have no incentive to try hard, they are not fearing God and judgment. Don't let the devil win your soul. Satan's lie in the Garden of Eden was that they would surely not die, Ozas is the same lie repackaged. These teachers will also tell you, that once you repent and say the prayer of salvation, if you don't turn from sin, the only consequence, is that you will simply not be given crowns as rewards in heaven, but you'll still get there. This isn't true either. The crowns are obviously only given to those who are genuinely saved in the first place, you have to be invited and let into the party, to get the party bag. The five crowns talked of in the Bible could in any case be metaphorical. This is potentially shown by the verse relating to the crown of rejoicing, at 1 Thessalonians 2:19. Quote, for who is our hope, or joy, or crown of boasting before our Lord Yeshua at his coming? Is it not you? End quote. As you see there are three descriptors given for the same thing and they apply to a person, not an object. Read your Bibles and you will learn the truth. Pray on it, asking for discernment, rebuke deceiving spirits of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you in truth and guide you. Don't believe me, believe the Word of God. Here are relevant New Testament scriptures in chronological order, and I have deliberately used the Tree of Life version so that the text is simpler to understand, please see the description box for more information on the TLV. Check the surrounding verses in your Bible, if you wish to understand more on the contexts. Bear in mind, that the audience for these verses was believers, not the unsaved. Matthew 3.10 Quote, already the axe is laid at the root of the trees, therefore every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. End quote. This verse is repeated at Luke 3 9. Your fruit is your behavior and actions, if you continue in sin, how are you different from the unsaved? Because you believe in Jesus, you think that's it? If that's what you believe, bear in mind this verse. James 2 18 20. Quote, but someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But do you want to know, 
you empty person, that faith without works is dead, end quote. Works of course, is also described as fruit. Matthew 5:20, quote, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and Torah scholars, you shall never enter the kingdom of heaven, end quote. Matthew 7:13, quote, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and those who enter it are many, end quote. Why do you think many go down the wrong path? Because they don't obey God, they stay in the world instead of leading a more spiritual life and they don't turn from their sins. Matthew 19:17, quote, Why do you ask me about what is good? Yeshua said to him, There is only one who is good, but if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments, end quote. Mark 4:20, quote, And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and they produce fruit, thirty, sixty and a hundredfold, end quote. Luke 1 6, quote, Together they were righteous before Adonai, walking without fault in his commandments and instructions, end quote. Luke 21 36, quote, But stay alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things about to happen, and stand before the Son of Man, end quote. What do you think this strength applies to? Yes, to resisting temptation to sin. You wouldn't need strength to escape tribulation, because if you were saved you would be raptured before tribulation happened. What about the adulterous woman who the scholars and Pharisees brought before Jesus? None of her accusers were without sin, and when Jesus pointed this out, they all left. Jesus asked her where her accusers were, she replied, in John 8:11. Quote, no one, sir, she said then neither do I condemn you, Yeshua said. Go, and sin no more, end quote. He forgave her, and told her to sin no more. John 15, 6-7, quote, If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and is dried up. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Just as the Father has loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, end quote. Do you seriously think you are abiding in Jesus if you are unrepentantly sinning and not bearing the fruit of obedience? It's quite evident that's not the case here. 1 John 5:18, quote, No one who abides in him keeps on sinning, no one who sins has seen him or known him, end quote. Acts 5:32, quote, And we are witnesses of these events, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him, end quote. Romans 3:25, quote, God set forth Yeshua as an atonement, through faith in his blood, to show his righteousness in passing over, sins already committed, end quote. KJV, uses the term remission of sins, to mean passing over. Yes, sins already committed. Not future ones, unless you are turning from willful sin and repenting of slip-ups that happen after you are saved, in other words being obedient. Read Romans, all the way up to the end of Romans 5, sin and grace are explained. Romans 6 then starts, quote, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin, so that grace may abound? May it never be, end quote. Romans 6, 15-18, quote, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? May it never be. Do you not know that to whatever you yield yourselves as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to what you obey, whether to sin resulting in death, or to obedience resulting in righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching under which you were placed, and after you were set free from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness, end quote. Romans 8, 7-8, quote, for the mindset of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not submit itself to the law of God for it cannot. 
so those who are in the flesh cannot please God, end quote. Romans 8 13, quote, For if you live according to the flesh you must die, but if by the Holy Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live, end quote. Romans 11, 17 to 22, quote, But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became a partaker of the root of the olive tree with its richness, do not boast against the branches. But if you do boast, it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. True enough. They were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but fear, for if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Notice then the kindness and severity of God, severity toward those who fell, but God's kindness toward you, if you continue in his kindness, otherwise you too will be cut off, end quote. Did you get that, you as a Gentile are the wild olive, and you can be cut off, as an unbelieving Jew can? That's losing salvation. We are supposed to worship God and be humble before him. How are you doing that? if you are willfully sinning and not repenting. It's made crystal clear here, what this means. Hebrews 10 26-29, quote, For if we keep on sinning willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but only a terrifying expectation of judgment and a fury of fire, about to devour the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the Torah of Moses, dies without compassion on the word of two or three witnesses. How much more severe do you think the punishment will be for the one who has trampled Ben Elohim underfoot, and has regarded as unholy, the blood of the covenant by which he was made holy, and has insulted the spirit of grace, end quote. Yes, you trample Jesus and his sacrifice underfoot if you continue in willful, unrepentant sin. 2 Corinthians 13, 5-10, quote, Test yourselves, to see whether you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or don't you know yourselves, that Messiah Yeshua is in you? Unless of course you failed the test, end quote. Why would we need to do that, if it didn't matter once we had said the prayer of salvation? 1 Peter 4.18, quote, Now, if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what shall become of the ungodly and the sinner, end quote. So as obedient Christians are barely saved, what does that tell you for those continuing in unrepentant sin? Ungodly means unbelievers, sinners are differentiated because they are sinning Christians. I recommend you also read the following verses, Luke 21, 34-36, 1 John 3 6, Revelation 2, about the seven churches, Hebrews 12, 4-9, 1 Thessalonians 4, 2-4. 2 Corinthians 6 17, John 15 6, in fact all of John, 1 Timothy 1 19, Hebrews 3, 12 14, and there are many verses in Galatians, especially Galatians 1. And there's plenty more scripture besides, the way you will know false teachers is by reading and knowing your Bible yourself and realizing it doesn't match up with what they are saying. Also look up the doctrine of the Nicolaitans that Jesus said he hated in Revelation 2, along with the doctrine of Balaam. They are about believers compromising, sinning. I leave you finally with this verse. Philippians 2.12, quote, Therefore, my loved ones, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, end quote. Why would we need to fear God if sinning didn't matter? He is full of mercy, but if we don't obtain mercy by repenting, all that's left, is his judgment. Remember, both unsaved and saved children below the age of accountability are raptured, because they don't have full responsibility for their actions. Adults do have full responsibility for their actions, this fact only matters if there is a consequence for their actions, otherwise they would also be raptured regardless the same as children. And then what would be the point of being born again? Along with the Bible verses used, I will provide some links in the description box below, to videos which will help you further, including a video from someone who almost died, 
and it was made very clear to him that O's ass is wrong, he had been saved at fourteen years old and Satan almost got his soul, because of his sin. God bless you all, please make the right choice, this is about your eternity.